Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I have, uh, we have a special Pisces twin reading for you. Uh, before we get started, we're going to go ahead and clear the air, but we also wanted to mention, please be sending positive thoughts to and prayers uh, to <clears throat> everybody currently in the Ukraine, as well as um, I'm going to include the Russian people because, and the, the Russian soldiers. Because they're, they're clearly, being lied to. Clearly being lied to by their government. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen the um, the footage of the Ukrainian, was the prime minister? Yeah. And literally before um, soldier died, they, they were told that they would be welcomed. Okay? So they're, they're lying to them as well. This whole situation is, it's very... It's disgusting. Very upsetting, yeah. But it is good how much of the whole entire world is coming together to back up and support the Ukraine and the injustice that is happening. So definitely, everybody, keep aware. Don't spiral into you know the doomsday scrolling. Please too don't. Much, That's but, not helping the energy. But do be positive and do be aware of the situation and do whatever part you can to help and support it and spread awareness. Any little part that you can and play send, in it. you know, positive thoughts about the situation that will be resolved. Okay. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and clear the air now. Okay, everybody, today we're going to be doing a Pisces Twin to readers uh, here. If you guys are new to my channel, we've been doing this since the beginning, since I started my channel where we to read together. Um, you know, you could go back. There's actually a playlist here that has different um, our different readings on here. But we're going to be covering the astrological new year and what's just, you know, what could be coming for you during this, you know, new astrological year, which begins, of course, with the beginning of the Aries season. It is appropriate today. I don't know if sometimes it's wafting in front of the camera. We have Persephone's return uh, incense burning as well, because that is basically what is going on here. If you do not know the myth story um, legend of, of Persephone and, you know, basically it's the story of spring, like how spring uh, began. There's many different um, variations. Yes. Especially mattering on the time period in which you're reading it. Keep that in mind. There is definitely patriarchal bias to some versions of the story yep. from the Greeks. So anyways, guys, that's what we're going to be covering today. I'm going to move this bowl out of the way really quick. Um, so we have three groups. We have the uh, Orange Calcite for group one. We have Cherry Quartz for group two. And we have Botswana Agate for group three. Uh, please do remember this is a general reading and not a personal one. So there's absolutely no reason to take anything personally if it's not resonating for you. This is a general reading, which means we are reading for many, many people, okay? Not every message will probably resonate for you. And of course, if you're attracted to more than one pile, that means that there could be um, more than one energy that applies to you or one or more messages that do. And there will, be, there will be many messages with each group, so keep that in mind as well. So uh, go ahead, do whatever it takes, meditate on which group is calling to you, and we're going to go ahead and get started. We chose the Orange Calcite group. This is going to be your reading. We're going to go ahead and just flip all the cards to take a look and see what's going on here. Get a nice overview. So of what, 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 what's coming to you during the astrological new year? We have the three of swords. We have temperance. We have the king of swords. Lots of sword energy. 
We have Mars in Pisces with Escape. Wow. We have Solar Flares with Activate. This is card 17. We have Eclipse in Taurus. This is cards 26. A Change of Heart. Reevaluation. This is quite interesting what's happening here. We have Semi Sextile with Allowing. And we have Leo with The Lover. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> this is... I would say one of the big things that obviously this pile is dealing with is for a lot of you, there's going to be reevaluations for you when it comes to especially romantic relationships, or if you're currently in a relationship, that relationship could definitely be um, tested or ending. And this makes sense because what is happening right now in the month of March, we have uh, Venus and um, Mars conjuncting. And you'll be able to see that like in the early morning hours, um, you'll be you'll be seeing them. They're really close to each other in the sky. You can see it. But what's going to be happening? And then it's going to at the end of March, March 28th, I believe it is. It's Venus is going to be um, it's going to be aspecting Saturn. And when this happens, it's going to really test relationships and the ones that make it past. And this kind of what's going to be going on all month for everybody. Uh, but the ones that make it past this test, this karmic stuff that's going to be happening, because Saturn always is the Lord of Karma, so uh, it's going to be dealing with that. Uh, those relationships that make it past this will be stronger and deeper than ever, and then others will release. That is what's going to happen here. And during this time period, it's not necessarily always romantic relationships. In this case, we see a lot of that, but it could be just friends too, and even family members. Um, so it could also definitely be reevaluations as far as how you're, um, you know, approaching your creative life as well. Because anything, especially fifth house related, because that is the house that rules Leo, and anything that is r Leo rules could also be very much um, in the emphasis. We also have um, Libra in Venus here. We also have, which Libras, um, Libra, if you're a Libra, this transit, th what's going on here with the transit and what's going on with this conjunction with Mars and Venus, you guys ha really have a strong chance of meeting a, a romantic partner during this time. Okay. You, I mean, it's really strong for Libras right now. So be paying attention to that. Um, we also have Sagittarius and Jupiter, mm -hmm. and it looks like we have, is that Mercury and Libra Which on one? the three swords? Yeah. So we have a lot of Libra energy. So the balance is going to be key here, but also I get the sense we have second house with Taurus. We have 12th house with Pisces. We have Leo. So um, uh, these houses could be strongly affected. You guys could be reevaluating uh, your residence. You guys could be making a move. Escape, temperance. Temperance is all about, you know, Sagittarius is about, tra you know, it could be talking about, you know, foreign cultures and, you know, um, travel in general, especially overseas travel. So some of you could be moving to a completely different country. You know, I'm just going to say it. Somebody could actually be escaping a mm -hmm. situation considering what we were talking about at the beginning in the intro here. You know, there's a lot of that going on right now. So, um, but I feel like there's definitely new cycles yeah, um, coming in and it's important because these new cycles are being activated and that you allow the natural flow of what is happening to occur. Um, and with the Mars and Pisces to get more into that, because there are particular events that could be related to this. So this might be coming up in your astrological new year. So when this card is drawn in a reading, it may show that the questioner's desire to please others to the exclusion of the personal needs yeah. has placed him or her within a complex and uncomfortable relationship or situation. Again, that's part of your reevaluation with whatever your romantic situation or friendship situation is right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mars in Pisces is very rarely a fighting aspect and more often than not, eventually when all other options fail, leads one to escape from a situation by any means available. So the events are using great energy to extract oneself from a tricky situation, working extremely hard for the benefit of others, shutting one's eyes to the reality of a situation. Okay, so that's what you really want to avoid. Yeah, and it's time to reevaluate and activate uh, certain aspects of your life, like, you know, are you allowing to, uh, people to get away with things? Are you allowing people to use you like a doormat? Are you allowing things to happen and not taking a stance? 
Now is the time to activate that inner power, you know, that solar plexus chakra. Own your shit. Be you know, bold, like, you know, Leo energy. And with the solar flare in particular, solar flares are kind of disrupting with, uh, you know, especially technology, communications, but also it's very much about bringing um, to question old systems and growing hungry for new answers. You know, this is when a solar flare happens, the volume is very much turned up. In fact, high peaks of solar activity were recorded around the French Revolution, Shit. the American Revolution, oh my God. and during the mid-1960s, times when people fought the status quo and sought revolutionary change. Fucking A, and that's what's happening. And we know the United States just had its... Pluto return, mm -hmm. which is big, big, big our first, shit. our first Pluto return. Yeah, as a country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, some actions to think to take with the solar flares. Uh, card being here for you is change is in the air. A flare of energy supports your work. The mood is restless, sparky, revolutionary, and curious. People are hungry for change. Yes, it's not the time to be quiet, but to be fast on your feet. Solar flares magnify the energy on any other cards you pull here. Holy fuck. So when the sun is storming, our social and political world activates. Revolutionary change manifests and trees grow faster in the forest. Oh, oh Aim carefully because the solar flare brings momentum, not thoughtfulness. That you have to that is what you have to provide is the thoughtfulness. A calm metaphysical perspective may not be easy, but you can bring that in to create balance and longevity. What you build during a, a solar flare may be hot and fr uh, fervent, uh, but not necessarily long lived. To turn an idea or a love affair into something permanent like a business plan or a partnership will take conscious effort. So the challenge for you guys is to watch out because, you know, tempers are going to flare along with the sun. Isn't that what's you happening? You can scorch yourself with too much passion and action and not enough emotional sensitivity if you're not mindful. But the gift that the solar flares is bringing is that the sun is sending extra voltage and inspiration your way. So use it wisely. Feel the heat in the situation, the passion in the people involved. Then balance that fire, balance that fire mm -hmm. by adding waters, compassion and thoughtfulness of air and the logistics of earth to turn that inspiration into reality. And you, we have that. Yeah, we have water, we have air, we have a lot of the what's earth. interesting, yeah. you guys, it literally just happened. There was a solar storm that knocked all those satellites down that mm -hmm. uh, SpaceX launched up. This shit's actually fucking happening right now. So um, I also have to mention with the Three of Swords, I'm going to be real literal with this. Some of you guys really need to watch out for your heart health. Yes. Uh, be very cautious. Be very wise. Um, you know, I also get the sense that if any of you, like for if a relationship is coming in, they're going to like have this uh, King of Swords kind of energy about them. Um, I get the sense they could be very Libra. Uh, they're, maybe their Libra is in the fifth house. They could be a Libra. Uh, they have like, you know, powerful Libra and Leo energy, possibly Sagittarius, maybe some Taurus. This is second. Um, I'm just naming off like, you know, different signs that this person could be. But with this in particular, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shout out and read this card for you because I find it very fascinating. A turning point in your life will revolve around changing values or a change of heart. And there's mm. that three of swords. Yeah. So um, as your values and goals change, so will the way you approach your activities and even the people in your environment. Be prepared to reevaluate many areas of your life, not least your approach to finances and people you love. Whoa. <laughs> Your sensitivities may surface at this time. It's important to work out where your values lie or a financial or personal matter may drain your energy. Mm -hmm. A shared venture, collaboration, or partnership will benefit from careful appraisal as your emotions may distract you from the subtleties of your circumstances. Take time out to reassess your business and personal ties. You may feel strongly about someone or about a principle, but... Is this overshadowing, uh, overshadowing practicalities in your own values? Reevaluation, right? It is a po it, it. Excuse me. It's possible at this time that you put someone else's concerns above your own. own. 
That's coming twice. Whoa. Wow. Or that you are a subject to manipulation. If so, you must boost your self-worth and quietly assert your values and take the time to reassess your principles and a financial circumstance. You may attempt to gain a sense of stability or certainty in your life uh, through someone else or through a financial circumstance. You may stake all your efforts on one principle or cause. You must learn how to avoid over communicating to one idea or, or excuse me, over committing to one idea or obsessing over it and to learn how to establish peace of mind and stability in life, even while your goals or values change. You'll gain a sense of security through careful actions and through a balanced approach to your self-worth, material goods, and the influence of other people in your life. You'll gain more stability and structure in life by being practical, grounded, and by an, uh, initiating a careful financial budget. So watch your money at this time. But literally, it's talking about balance. And literally, the temperance card is about Balancing. alchemy. It's about alchemy. It's about balance. And so is Libra. We have a lot of Libra energy here, too. And it's crazy that my twin was talking about the heart health thing. Um, Leo rules the, the heart, heart, the spine, heart, the spinal heart. column, and the upper back. Yeah, you guys need to watch out for injuries or health issues with this. And I want to read the keywords here with semi-sextile. We have encourages, sees the potential in, clarifies, gives hope to, compensates, intuits, tempers, responds, cycles. Obviously, we're going through a cycle here. Grows, realizes, and rewards. For Leo the lover, it is expressive, creative, and you need to express your, you know, assert your will, okay, and really express yourself. Creative, loving, playful, warm, overt, self-confident, flirtatious, glowing, bedazzling, extroverted, vital, guileless, egotistical, juicy, proud, trusting, and ex um, excessive. excessive. You know what's funny is Express Yourself by Madonna was totally going through my mind, that song in particular, and guess what? She's a Leo. And what's really interesting is she has shit. I think her Leo, her son, is actually in the in 12th, 12th house. house. She's very Pisces uh, as well as Leo, which is really interesting if you look at her natal chart. So um, anyways, this is what we are pretty much seeing here for you guys. I want to do one little last thing. I'm going to pull one of these uh, to see what's coming up for a little bonus because I'm just i feeling it. Um, I want to see what comes up. Okay, so like this is what's going to be kicking off the astro astrological new year. So think starting midway through March, these things could be starting um, and carry on through the rest of this year until we get to March of 2023. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, that one wanted to go and one more. Oh, there yeah. it is. There it is. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, wow. Future. You may travel, oh my God, or host an overseas traveler soon. Either way, great social fun awaits. We also have care required. Guard yourself against deception and be careful of making foolish mistakes. This is so this crazy. Time. I knew it. I felt like we needed to pull these that it would like give some extra oomph here. And obviously it's coming through. This is how it's been for me like for the past few weeks. It's just crazy spot on. So anyways, guys, that's it. That's all we're seeing for this group. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. I have the link to my Patreon where I post all kinds of exclusive readings. Uh, I do personal readings over there as well. There's different tiers for that and all my other information below, including my twins here. So uh, have a great and wonderful Astrological New Year. Um, send your prayers out to those uh, who are desperately needing it at this time. Take good care of yourself, and we'll catch you next time. Those Bye -bye. of you who chose Group 2 with the Cherry Quartz, this is going to be your reading. We are going to flip all of the cards here to see what's happening. We have Nine of Swords. Wow, stress. We have the world. Yeah, isn't that the, what's going on in the world right now? Yeah, no Jesus shit. Christ. We have the King of Pentacles. We have Moon in Virgo. We have Jupiter uh, Abundance. This is card 18. This is card 23. We have Quincunx with Complexity, isn't it though? Uh, we have the First House of Self. And then we have two of these. Oh, wow. We have two of these cards. We have Jupiter, the Sixth House, Jupiter in Virgo. We have Virgo twice here. And then we have, again, another Earth sign. We have Jupiter in Capricorn. We have a whole lot of Earth energy. And Capricorn energy, too. Um, so a whole, this is definitely affecting your finance, abundance, 
Um, some of you have been working really hard on uh, material gain aspect of your life. I see that it's been a complex, very stressful ride. Um, so, but the good thing is it's coming to, the cycle's coming to an end and it's like going to be a job well done. You know, with everything, when we're working our way up, the more responsibility we take on, the more stress we take on in our lives. So it is very important during this time that you really maintain a healthy diet, take good care of yourself, and definitely watch your health because it says the chance to booth health and vitality leads to satisfaction. You also have to have a lot of patience oh, yeah. um, with this process, especially with so much earth energy um coming out here this is all about having that patience building towards your abundance so in particular with the patience card here with jupiter in virgo this is saying when this card appears in a reading it may show that the questioner should not be afraid to ask for assistance with a project events that could be related and these could come up during your astrological new year acting as secretary for a social or self-help group, reorganizing the methods and systems of an organization, spending time helping someone with a learning difficulty. And then, of course, with the 10th, with control here, we have, when this card appears in a reading, it often indicates a need to take on full responsibility for one's current position yep. and applying control in order to um, extract oneself from a difficult situation. So the events here are taking on a responsible position in an organization, achieving recognition for a lengthy and patient work. Yeah. Yeah. A politician or business tycoon, a prominent figure in the religious community. You know what's so interesting is on the Saturn card, of course, we have, you know, Saturn himself. And we have, look at the 10th house. Look at the, look at the cards. They're like the same, okay? I also feel like you also have something very karmic happening. You're going to have things that are like suddenly come up because this is Uranus energy here where sudden things are going to occur, sudden things are going to ha happen, they're going to be a little bit complex, and how you, it's going to require a lot of patience and control in dealing with these, for sure, especially when it comes to your health, too, okay, because we have first house of the self, this is about your physical body, your outlook, your self-image, life philosophy, consciousness, opinions, awakening so some of you could be definitely going through a spiritual awakening or you're awake all night working because this is the nine of swords energy for sure we have self-awareness arrival expression gateway and entry point okay um it seems like you're you're about to step up into a very um new new and uh, role that's going to require a lot of responsibility, mm -hmm. which is why you have to have that patience, especially because we have Jupiter. So Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Pisces, and it has a lot to do with, again, that expansion and for anything that has to do with, you know, the world, obviously, uh, education, law, philosophy, travel, and abundance. Mm -hmm. So these are all going to be things that are going to come up for you. And also, Jupiter not only brings great things in, but it also can be uh, the planet of excess, where we have a little bit too much libation, a little bit too much stress, a little bit too much of anything. So, And, and, and also, it can actually do the flip and make people too lazy uh, as well. So it's, it's really kind of a complex, complex... It's complexity. You're dealing with a lot of complexity, which is, you know, on this one with Quinn Cux, uh, this is irritates, puzzles, mystifies, complicates, contradicts, clashes, misses the mark, requires translation, adjusts, makes curious, educates, and transforms. So, and that's where the importance of the patient card comes in. It's like, if you need help, then ask for help. Don't be taking on all the stress on your own. There's somebody you might too. need a business partner. It's a it's sort. an earth sign person for sure. I mean, we've got Virgo here, we've got Capricorn here. There's a, an older masculine energy that you can definitely uh, reach out to for assistance and guidance. So, and with that uh, Jupiter card, the action to take with it is you need to think bigger. This scenario requires you to be expansive and forgiving. Deal with it in a spacious, curious, fair, and philosophical way. 
Think globally. Yeah. Bring in contributions from all around the world. Consider traveling physically or traveling with your senses by listening to music from a less familiar culture or tasting their food. Talk to people who grew up in a circumstance um, foreign to you and get their viewpoint. Diversify your perspective and that of your team to discover the missing pieces. The missing pieces. Yeah, look at this puzzle pieces. Um, yes. To make up a larger whole. Engage in abundant optimism. Get the word out through generosity. Give abundantly and goodwill comes back to you. Invest in education, publication, and broadcasting. Mm. Just be careful that your generosity is actually helping the recipient and not enabling or burdening them. Oh. Oh, yeah, there's the big fucking kicker um, right there. Ask what would really help. Jupiter's energy needs a big room and an audience, but it can overshadow important people in more intimate circumstances. Watch that your expansive capacity does not cramp the experimentation of beginners or crowd beloved um, introverts. Notice where you might overwhelm the people you love and give them room for their more subtle style. If you're the one being so overwhelmed, appreciate your own value, expand in ways that work for you, and let the person with Jupiter energy do their thing. Mm -hmm. So the challenge that Jupiter presents is it can bring too much of a good thing yep, or see? leave people feeling overwhelmed. Yep. Watch out for magical thinking and a Pollyanna avoidance of problems the gift that jupiter brings to you is give and you shall receive jupiter calls you to expand your worldview mm -hmm. so reach out and feel at one with the whole universe it's so interesting the way that this card looks because you know that jupiter sitting there like as if it was a you know a globe and then we literally have the world card here. When it was mentioning travel and learning about other cultures. And you some, have that here. Yeah, too. some of you guys really need to open up and, and expand your mind and really delve into a different culture that you could be working with somebody and not know anything about their customs. And this is a common thing, especially, and I'm just going to say, and I'm going to, I'm going to call the United States out on this. There are so many people in this country who are totally oblivious and clueless to, you know, other cultures and their belief systems and things like this. Really need to freaking, you know, reel it in. I know I'm not, not everybody, okay? But it, it, it personally it drives me fucking crazy when that happens. It's like, quit being so freaking naive, you know? It's or like, or self centered. Yeah, like. exactly. Like, you're the fucking God's gift to the earth. And it's just, like, yeah, we're all creatures of the earth here, and we have to get along, and we have to freaking understand one another. And you don't do that by sticking your nose up at somebody or thinking you're better somehow or whatever. People Again, are just different. There is a. A horrible habit of a lot of Americans go and travel and then they They're just, rude! They expect <laughs> the people in their own country to cater to them, either in speaking the language or when it comes to food or, any, or anything. And it's like, you are the visitor here. You should be respectful of their customs and what they require and what's normal in their and it's place. not just the United States. Okay? No, it isn't. But I'm but just saying, I'm calling that out. There is the a stereotype like with America. Oh, with yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. So we have a moon in Virgo here. Okay, so... And she was mentioning with this, it's like doing things in excess. Maybe some of you are being a little bit too control freaky about mm. certain things, which, you know, it's good to have drive and ambition. But then there's a point where it's like overkill, where you're actually killing yourself, okay, and causing a lot of stress Get and undo things. Help. Sleepless nights, not being able to sleep right because you're not eating right. And look at the Jupiter. There's like beautiful like wine and fruit and all this different stuff here. Um, there's a definitely, if you want to be more content, here's... This card is all about this. It is time now to indulge your true interests and to integrate these into your daily schedule so that you can enjoy your life more. You'll feel motivated by daily activities and work that really means something to you on a core level. You may wish to be at the top of your game or feel that you must consider where your skills can be applied in a new and challenging terrain. Otherwise, you risk resting on your laurels or worse still, stagnating and your daily life will seem a chore rather than a pleasure. If, however, you feel valued in your current work and are excited to continue rising to the new challenges in your daily life, continue on this path as this is where you are best able to uh, be of use and service to those with whom you work. 
And this ultimately will bring you the greatest satisfaction and contentment. This is a good time to review health practices and routines. You may feel particularly vivacious or perhaps the opposite. If it's the latter, this is your chance to boost health and nutrition so that you can stay in peak fitness and be productive both in the workplace and as a valuable member of your community. To be happy, it's vital to boost your self-esteem and enjoy basic daily exercise that has a wonderfully uplifting effect. A health or beauty process such as a beauty treat or regular gym workout will generate a fresh approach to life and create a more fulfilling and deeper sense of satisfaction, especially if you have been particularly self-critical, have been criticized recently, or are lacking in self-esteem. Aim to boost energy levels and you'll feel revitalized on many more levels than purely the physical. This in turn will improve all areas of your daily life and lead to contentment. Seriously, you guys. And I'm just going to say this, and I am a big advocate of this. I mean, kind of personal training certification, okay? Um, so I'm telling you, you want to be mentally healthy? You want to sleep well? Work out, okay? Uh, you love your body? You want to you wanna care and be body positive? Then take good care of your body. It doesn't mean neglecting it. It means taking care of it and being proud of your health and your vitality and things like this. Okay? You want to be the healthiest version of you. Yeah. Because that's what helps you to, you know, experience life at the highest, you know, degree that you can. And it unclogs energy, like blocked energy. It really does. Like if you're really stressed out, get your ass out in nature. Go for a freaking walk. Get some fresh air. And actually that is just like... If you're dealing with any kind of overwhelming, you know, stress or a block of any kind, it's like one of the key ways to help you get unstuck or to, you know, find a new idea is just to not do that thing. To go and do something else, either a different hobby that you find. Travel. Uh, create traveling. Especially if you're in a creative field. Um, again, being outside. You know, spending time with somebody that you need to go spend time with and just like getting out and about, just doing something that is not um, that particular thing that you're focusing on will help to give you more clarity about the thing that you're trying to focus on. So anyways, um, I think we're going to go ahead and pull a couple little bonus cards here. I'm going to pull these right now for you to see some bonus message but definitely if you're going to be dealing with a lot of first house which of course is aries and it's uh, also your ascendant yes so you know really tapping into that and i think that's going to be on the forefront for this group a lot you know how you're viewed and how you view yourself as how well. you take action about things yeah as well. there's one there's two holy crap watch my shells girl they keep catching on me. All right. Anyways, we have communication. A reunion could bring love or rekindling of friendships. A lucky win seems likely. You got all this Jupiter energy, which is a lucky, lucky thing. So well, it's funny because then we have reflection. Friendships in your life may come to an end. Others could blossom and become stronger. So obviously there is a, a reunion. Asking, asking somebody for help that maybe you are friends with or that you like reconnect with and you're like, oh, we're actually like in the same kind of business or maybe you have a different perspective that can actually help me with what I'm currently doing with my project work, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah. So it looks like there's going to be uh, some interesting uh, events ahead for you guys. So anyways, definitely health and work is yes, the big emphasis yes, here. Yes, exactly. So anyways, that's all we're seeing uh, for this group. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell in the drop down box. There's information on how to join my Patreon where you can see uh, all the exclusive readings and information that I put up on there, um, as well as all my other booking information. And uh, CR's information is down there too. Um, uh, we will have a Pisces Twin video over on my channel as well. It will be a di completely different topic, but there will probably be, I wouldn't be surprised if there's crossover messages. So anyways, guys, that's it. Thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Who chose group three with the Botswana agate? This is going to be your reading. Let's see what the astrological new year is bringing in for you guys. We have the moon with Pisces energy. We have the Princess of Swords, which is the Page of Swords. We have the Six of Pentacles. We have Sun and Sagittarius. Stride 
out into new territory with adventure. And this is card nine. We have Mercury with communication. Um, we have Taurus. The, God, interesting how the repeating energies keep popping yes. up. So we have Taurus with the bombshell. We have Mercury again, okay, with Double messages. Mercury. And then we have Mercury again. Mercury in Aquarius, the 11th house with originality. Jesus a whole lot of communication going on here. And you know what? I'm going to say it because we have the Page of Swords. You know, um, this could definitely be, there could be a lot of gossip going on around you mm -hmm. as well, okay? Secrets coming out. You're going to hear about somebody gossiping or talking about you. It doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, okay? Uh, there could be good gossip. There's definitely a lot of exchange. So, like, depending on... How you approach uh, people and what you give to situations is what you're going to get back in return. So keep that in mind with how you communicate. The mm -hmm. energy that you bring is what you're going to get back, especially with the Six of Pentacles here. This is Mercury on here as well. Mm -hmm. Mercury and Saturn. That is freaking very... Uh, uh, you know, you're going to have somebody... No, yeah, that's Taurus. That's, oh, okay. I didn't Taurus see Taurus okay. My eyes. Sorry, don't Taurus. have my glasses on, guys. Holy shit. But again, repeating energy... <laughs> I feel like you're going to have some uh, an older person come in who's going to be a mentor. Uh, maybe if you guys could be applying, there could be a lot of like positive talk going on about you, especially when it comes to career stuff. Uh, maybe it has something to do, like you guys are working in a career that has something to do with um, being very original, uh, being very creative, and somebody's going to catch wind of this and think, oh, this is such a ri original idea. We'd like to run with this and give it a try. It could even send you out into new territory where literally you are going to be traveling quite a bit. Could be traveling over water because, you know, we have Pisces energy here. Um, and, uh, you know, Neptune, you know, and also Jupiter energy. Okay. Cause Pisces is co-ruled, um, as well as Aquarius is co-ruled too. Mm, Uranus. Co-ruled by Uranus and Saturn. There's mm. that Saturn energy. So I feel like there could be some definite movement, some travel here because of this. For some of you, there also could be somebody who's trying to badmouth you and gossip and stuff like this, but it's not going to fucking work. Uh, it's actually going to come back to bite them in the ass. So um, the way that you handle it and stay out of stay out of any petty gossips, please stay the hell away from that. You are better than that. And with the originality card here, this is definitely a huge message that you know it demands that you guys uh, take a lateral view and find a new approach to whatever it is that you're, you know, doing within this new astrological year. The particular events that this is related to is a new approach, an idea that necessitates drastic change, <coughs> an unusual research result, a shock announcement, mm -hmm. an invention or innovation of some sort. And again, this could be <coughs> maybe an innovation or, you know, an idea that has something to do with facilitating communication but also potentially things that are in the realm of beauty because we do have Taurus here as well in, in luxury as well as material assets. Um, I also feel like really because like, you know, this is immature energy. And whenever we have Saturn involved, we're talking about mature energy here. We're also talking about karmic situations. So I really feel like if some of you could have be like what the message that was coming through is like applying for some sort of internship and you are definitely going to get it. And there is a mentor who's going to come in and really be guiding you through this whole process. And you're going to be learning a lot. It's like, and I feel like in this situation, you want to be your best, most mature self when you're handling this. Okay. Um, and like I said, stay out of petty gossips and stuff. For so sure. especially with Mercury being so heavily emphasized for you, the, action with mercury is to communicate yeah the mood is quick fast and cerebral look at your situation from many different sides okay look at the innovation uh be light on your feet and make sure you have all the information you need if not be ready to research investigate translate meditate check your facts and learn Fall and learning, higher education, yep, that's you might Sagittarius. be starting that. Yeah, that's why I said internship. You know, uh -huh. you could be getting into college and you know, you're going to have like this amazing professor or mentor. Uh, so follow up on all lines of communication to make sure others understand what you said and you understand what they intended. 
publish, broadcast, network, and engage social media. Make the call, submit the resume, send the manuscript. Check all Mercury ruled equipment, such as vehicles and communication electronics. Proofread and back up your files. Mythological Mercury uh, could be a trickster when he worked for himself, but he also played the role of psychopomp, diving into the underworld to escort trapped spirits out of it. If you need to go down into your own personal underworld, it may be time to walk with a therapist, shamanic healer, or other um, in in terror. How do you? Sorry, Integris. Guys. Integris guide into the deep realm. Um, so the challenge with Mercury for you guys is when a quick mind is not connected to the heart, it can cause trouble. Watch out for the busy hamster wheel of the mind, shallow thinking, scattered, dishonest, or glib approaches, yep. and mistakes made when in a rush. The gift with Mercury here is Mercury as the messenger of the gods. Listen deeply to the messages of your soul, yeah. the conduit to spirit, and become the messenger yourself. You know what cracks me up. We're talking about Mercury, of course, Hermes, Mercury. Oh, yeah. Thing. And we have a bull. Oh, yeah. I think of him stealing the cattle from, what is it, Apollo? Yeah, Apollo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. Hey, he's a little shithead. Yeah, oh, he's adorable, though. I love him. Okay, so anyways, we have a sun in Sagittarius. So, an adventure is in the cards. Long distance travel, a spiritual educational, there it is, or legal matter will capture your attention. Broaden your mind with research and a more detailed understanding of the people you love. Be proactive and outgoing. Your generosity of spirit and your broad mindedness are a credit to you and your joviality will attract similarly minded and upbeat people. If you're in need of legal help, oh my gosh, and that could be for some of you because we have this card here. Uh, if you're needing legal help, be an os oh, yeah. Take two. <laughs> an optimistic Mercury. See? Yeah. God. Okay, so <laughs> little booger. Uh, an optimistic approach to seeking ex expert advice will help you research options and delve into the true nature of your circumstances. Try a new approach if current matters are stuck in a legal quagmire. Likewise, with a relationship, the time is right for a fresh approach your life will follow where you place your attention so ensure you remain positive a relationship may be exhilarating and upbeat to begin with but ensure that your enthusiasm doesn't override the reality of your circumstances if distance or other roadblocks threaten a, perspe a prospective partnership find new ways to put the relationship on a more viable footing or accept that this may not be the most suitable match in which case, it's important to stride out into new territory to meet someone new. Mm, networking. Uh-huh. This card can represent a new relationship that will teach you deeper truths about life. It can also represent a project or a particular learning curve in life that will broaden your horizons. Above all, this is a proactive and optimistic card that suggests you set goals, study, broaden your worldview, See, this is really coming up for a lot of the groups. Yeah, broadening your worldview. Wake the fuck up, everyone. Uh, deepen spiritual understanding and are generally more outgoing. Uh, it can also be associated with sports, especially equest equestrianism. Huh. If you asked a yes or no question, the answer is yes. Very interesting. interesting. Uh, super interesting. And then with the uh, Mercury cards, with the communication and then the bombshell, obviously this new relationship coming in, they could be real good looking you know like literally um i'm just feeling that they could definitely um taurus is i mean i i'm trying to remember if i've actually physically known and this is just me okay i know they're out there but i don't think i've ever known a taurus who was blonde i do you do yeah oh wow see i ne never they're always dark hair <laughs> every single one of them so anyways with the uh mercury communication we have words thoughts analysis information learning trade ideas smarts reporting awareness awareness of that worldview that was in this card uh vision lens palette perception curiosity narrative muse and wonder you could definitely be having somebody come in who is quite the muse for a project that you're working on okay be, I, and what i want to say is it could be a pisces um 
you know, they they just definitely had that kind of vibe about them. They're mm. kind of like otherworldly and ethereal. So um, we have Taurus, the bombshell. We have earthy, practical, steadfast, productive, fertile, tactile, ampile, worldly, ripe, pleasure-seeking, sensuous, blooming, solid, possessive, tenacious, loyal, patient, and deliberate. Very interesting stuff coming up here. Yeah, you need to be very deliberate with your how you um, speak. So, again, don't be too... Again, with the Mercury, it's going to want to go fast. It's going to want to go a little... But you're going to need to learn to temper that a little bit and slow it down enough to, you know, be able to really think through what it is you're saying and how you're saying it. To make sure that your message is really getting across clearly. And also to be a very active listener, I think, is extremely important. So that you can properly understand what somebody is communicating to you. And you could, this group could definitely be getting messages from beyond the veil because we have that Neptune and the Pisces dreams energy. As well. Yeah, be really paying attention to this. These dreams or these messages you could be getting could actually spawn some hardcore creative originality. Okay, uh, that is something that you're working on. And it doesn't have to be artistic necessarily. No. It could be in the business realm, a new way to approach something so, to handle it. Actually. A lot of very famous scientists throughout history, they got their ideas or they found answers to, you know, conundrums that they were facing in their scientific practice through their dreams. Yep. They came with the answers in that or like something in their dreams sparked them to go down that path to research it and look at it from their scientific uh, viewpoint that they were doing. Yep. A lot of people. I mean, it's, it's crazy when you delve into it. Oh. We oh, just, oh, oh my ah! god holy crap oh wow wow oh, here we go oh. oh my god and what this car fucking says holy shit and this one look at the look at the yeah, card right yeah, here yep yeah. we have sunshine the sun is shining on you career and business growth fabulous communication and relationships and then look, read this long distance communication will open up your life exciting experiences for singles and career advancement for others wow I, you got, chills. I know that's fucking crazy Again, communication for you is going to facilitate <laughs> so much so do not be lacking um during this astrological new year when it comes to networking again Engage with if, if social media is something that you haven't tried to utilize. Again, be careful with how you utilize it. But there's there's major communication opportunities through that. And find the right social Groups. media for you, yes. okay? Because not all of them are good for and everybody. Also, and don't try to fucking you know use every single one. You don't have to go and be on every single social media. Just. You know, you can try downloading a bunch of them and kind of playing around and see what feels right to you. Where do you get the best and response? Then, you know? Yeah, exactly. And then just stick with that one. Okay, don't put so much stress on yourself by spreading yourself too thin. I hate that. Across a bunch. <laughs> Believe I hate me. That. Uh, it's fucking exhausting. It, it really is. Don't do it. <laughs> okay, guys. So that's it. That's all we're seeing for this group. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Uh, in the drop-down box, there's a link to my Patreon where I have exclusive content posted, and you can uh, jump on a personal reading tier for a monthly personal reading. Um, also, I have other information down below, including Ciara's uh, link to her stuff over there on her YouTube channel, and where we will be posting a video, a Pisces twin video over there too. So. It will be a completely different topic, but who knows, you might get cross messages. So anyways, guys, that's it. We hope you have a wonderful astrological new year. Take good care of yourselves and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.